Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting, October 24th, 2018, 7 p.m. at the Deerfield Municipal Offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield. First of all, would you all please rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This meeting is being televised. We don't have any minutes to approve right now. Do you want to wait for 7.15 for the sewer right here? Uh, the, our, uh, folks from Harvest, I told them oh, yes. we'd have some time. Okay. Please. Sure. Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, my name is Dick Evans. I'm a lawyer in Northampton, and I'm happy to represent uh, Harvest Inc. or their affiliated organization who proposes to do the marijuana cultivation operation at the Piner Gardens facility on 198 Mill Village Road. We're here tonight just to bring you up to date on our plans. Great. Uh, we are proceeding in anticipation of doing cultivation. We'll be filing the special permit and the, the site plan approval application shortly. And uh, in anticipation of those, uh, we're going to hold a, uh, a uh, open house, so to speak, at, at the facility on, well, we've got a weekend designated, November 11th or 12th, that's a Saturday or Sunday, and we haven't nailed down a exact date or time, but I'd be open for your input as to what would be convenient for you, like 10 o'clock on Saturday morning or 4 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. What would work best to, than you think? Any ideas? It depends on the weather. If it's cold and snowy, I can be there any time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope we don't have any snow. Uh, this is at your facility? Yeah. Uh, so maybe we'll say 10 a.m. on Saturday. On the 10th. On the 10th. Yeah. Veterans Day weekend. Let's see. What is it? Veterans Day weekend. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, so we'll be seeking uh, local approval for cultivation at site. Now, under the existing zoning bylaws, as you know, manufacture is, is not allowed. We are, will likely be back here in a few weeks after your special town meeting in November and ask the Board of Selectmen to sponsor a, or consider sponsoring a, a amendment to the zoning bylaw, which would allow uh, product manufacture at the facility, the cultivation facility. Now, this, this is Joe Kachuri and, and, and Paul Nowak from, from the company, who I think yep. you've all met before. Um, Thank you. I don't want to get into particulars, but when we say manufacturer facility, we're talking about a, a fairly small room, 2,000 square feet, you know, probably a fourth the size of this one, with a machine or two in it. It's a clean operation. We're not, don't think factories belching smoke and things <laughs> like that. Uh, so those are our big plans. We're going to go forward with cultivation. Hopefully, we'll be able to do manufacture there. If not, we'll have to find a site somewhere else. And so you'll be seeing us again. And what, what, is, what does manufacturing entail? What, what do you actually, product-wise, what do you produce? Well, basically, it if means you were extracting gonna... the, 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 the actual ingredients from the product and then uh, using that. You want to... Well, I'm, I, excuse me. Uh, thank sure. you for this time. Yeah, thank you, Paul John. Nowak is here. He's actually more of a specialist in this field. Okay. And Paul's an engineer by trade, and I would I would uh, defer to Paul. Okay. Speak. Yeah. But, but we don't have much time. Sure. Dick. Dick's yeah. exactly sure. right. It's simply the process of, of removing the oil from plant material and then using gotcha. that oil to make products. That's basically. Uh, I see. But the, the machinery has no sound, no noise. It's not a big clanky thing. It's just under pressure. So it's not this. I think some people think they hear the word manufacturing and they think you know machinery. It's not that. It's quiet, and it eliminates a lot of the odor. It's 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 the way the future is, and, you know. I'm, and it's, I'm, it's pulling oils out of the plant, right, is, right. Is, or the product, or whatever it is. Okay, correct. I wondered what it, I didn't and know what, what it you'd does. Make is it, it adds another layer of, of jobs, mm -hmm. full time, and there's a little different skill set. So there could be you know maybe a higher rate in in the pay side of scales, but it's all under one roof. And and just a, a point of reference. Uh, historically in the state of Massachusetts, and I don't want to have my, num I want my numbers to be close to be accurate, you're about 98%, 98, 99% of all the cities and counties allow that use within the cultivation. Hmm. So there's a logical reason that that marriage happens. Okay. Um, we'll do some research, and if we have some questions, we'll reach out to Excellent. you. Excellent. 
Thank you. Really appreciate your time. Sure. Thank we'll you. See you in November. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank, Thank you for coming. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah. It was Thank nice to so meet you, Paul. Thank, Thank you for yeah. coming. So you want to take a minute and uh, sign the November 15th special town meeting warrant? Do you want to discuss it first? Yes, <laughs> that would love to. <laughs> I know the, you uh, do. I'm one day sorry. With the license as well. Um, yeah. Want to do a quick run through? Or? Yeah, please. Sure. Yes. Okay. I had the motions ready, um, pretty pretty much. So, uh, but I didn't bring them because I didn't want to be presumptuous. <laughs> do you want me to but read I, the um, the articles? Okay, so um, you don't have to read it in it, you know, just say what it's for. So, okay, so article one to oh, see if the to get the motion to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate transfer from available funds or otherwise okay. provide a sum or sums of money to pay for the operation of the South County Senior Center or take any action relative thereto. Um, I can nope. You know what I'm going to do? Well, do you, okay, do you, you happen to know to when the town meetings are for Sunderland and Waitley? I thought that they were in October. October? I, I Sunderland's in November, I think, now. It is. They might have moved around. I thought, wait. I believe they were all, it's on all their warrants. It is on okay. all their warrants. But here, here's my initial warrants. draft of motions, which, is, which, oh. which would be easier to, well, or, oh, or just reference explain, them. Yeah. explain. Okay. So uh, this amount will pay for Deerfield's share of an unanticipated cost at the regional senior center. The towns of Waitley and Sunderland have appropriated additional funds for their share of these costs, and this will be at um, their t annual yeah. town, or special town meetings. Um, article 2, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate transfer from available funds or otherwise provide a sum or sums of money to conduct a town building study or take any action relative thereto. Um, the explanation is select board and the capital improvement the up -to -date planning committee have determined this product to be critical for long-term uh, program and capital project planning and to assist the newly formed town buildings advisory committee in its deliberations. These funds will be added to the 25,000 appropriated at, at our annual town meeting for a uh, study of the congressional church, congregational church um, donated to the town this past year. Is the amount in there? Uh, the amount was to, uh, 30, uh, so to move to transfer from free cash the sum of 30,000 right. okay. for a town buildings assessment. So it'll be a total of fifty-five thousand. Did we have a confirmation that was enough? I don't know. No, we know that Sunderland spent thirty-five thousand on theirs, um, and I've, I've touched base with their consultant. Um, it depends on what we decide. What gets decided to be looked at, you know. So to a certain extent, we don't have a firm number. We can't do that really without putting out a RFP. Okay. No, that's fine. Do you, is the um, build town buildings advisory committee going to meet before the town meeting, or has that, has that we appointed some people, right? Mm -hmm. I, I remember that, um, mm -hmm. Bruce? You you were. I, I, as far as I'm aware, we have no plans. Not yet. Yep. Um, Just curious if you would. But I, I, mean, I would personally make a recommendation that we we separate the senior center and the other building study. I think they're different. Yeah. Um, one is an evaluation of long-term, long-term needs for the town buildings, and the other is an evaluation of the existing building, I believe, the senior center and the old church. Mm -hmm. You say the same about the library, though, too, couldn't you? <laughs> it's separated. But well, anyway, yes. Let's let's, not gonna, let's, do need, let's do the warrant. Let's do the warrant. Need a committee. Uh, meeting, but yeah. Yeah. we don't have a full committee. Is it only going to involve those two buildings? No. No. All, no, no. All it's all to be determined what will be hopefully yeah, all probably all We'll probably have to RFP it by a separate building so we'll get a total cost okay. and be able to pick and choose. Okay. So um, Article 3 is to see if the town will uh, vote to raise an appropriate transfer from available funds or otherwise provide a sum or sums of money to pay for additional landfill wells and monitoring costs uh, related to the regulatory requirements or take any action relative thereto. I move the town transfer from free cash $22,000 for additional landfill monitoring and testing requirements. In response to monitoring and testing results at the, um, at the closed town 
landfill, the Department of Environmental Protection is requiring additional well installation and other improvements. Do you want to speak? Kevin is here. Oh, hey, Kevin. Is 22 enough? I'm sorry? Is 22,000 enough? Yes, it should. Okay. Okay. As long as there's no other orders from DEP. Yeah. Right. I, I yeah. thought Brenda had said maybe 25 made more sense, but you're okay? I think 22, I think, okay. would be all right with. I mean, obviously, 25, another 3,000 would give us a nice little buffer, but I mean, if that 3,000, I'm sure I could probably absorb someplace. So so who's going to do this well? I'm sorry? Who's going to do this well? The wells are already done. Oh, they're, it's just the monitoring. Correct. It's the who's monitoring gonna... plus. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it's a combination of the monitoring, um, the new wells, and the depressions that are on the capped landfill that DEP is now requiring us to repair under um, engineering eyes, which in turn made the cost a little bit higher. Long story short is we've got two small depressions on the backside. We filled them in in the past. It's, it's depressed again. Mm -hmm. um, according to their regulations, you're not allowed to have any depressions on your capped landfill that has the capability of withstanding or holding water. Mm -hmm. um, which in some aspects I don't understand because you've got a 40 mil plastic in there. It doesn't allow anything through it anyway, but regardless. So with that being said, plus we also have wells on the backside. When we milled up on Lee Road, what we did was we stockpiled that material. So that way we can utilize that as a roadway to go to the backside because otherwise we we're going to have to go back and forth with something very small like a skid steer with bringing material back and forth because we're not allowed to have anything more than 7.5 PSI per square inch ground pressure. Um, that in turn probably would have entailed for the area that they're talking about running a machine back and forth for probably two weeks nonstop, eight hours a day, five days a week. We looked at this and said, you know what, this is crazy because we got to rent the machine anyway because we don't have a machine that, that falls underneath that criteria. So what we ended up doing was we put together a plan and the theory is, is to go ahead and run the roadway near the back side along the fence line, or I should say the wood line on the west side of the cap landfill, which is right, right next to where the depressions are. It would make it very easy to go ahead and repair those depressions. Plus at the same time, that gives us better access to our monitoring wells. So that way in the winter time, when they have to go out and do their monitoring, they're not trudging through the snow. They actually got a roadway they can go to. Kevin, that's really good. Thank you. Thank you. Stay for the, safe for the sewer. Okay. Um, article four uh, to see if the town will vote to just amend read the, the um, oh, just motion. The, yeah. the motion. I move the town uh, amend the bylaws of the town of Deerfield by. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is for a capital improvement planning committee bylaw right. change. Right. So that was. Four, so I don't have a motion. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, we've gone back and forth on that, and we're going to just keep it generic as opposed to putting the whole bylaw in and the changes because Any changes it's a work in progress. There's some discussion about. Uh, well, the nitty gritty would be decided by the committee and no. would be updated by the committee itself. So it would be the general no, overview. It's up to the select board what you want to put on, but. We'd like to meet, we'd like to discuss this further with the CIPC tomorrow night, we being uh, the finance staff, finance department heads, mm -hmm. myself, um, and I think okay. um, Bruce St. Peter's will be there as well. There's, it's problematic. It's, it's it, some work to do. New, is new, the new chapter 10 available for review? Yes, yep. copies of it. In fact, I, I had to integrate it into the warrant, but after hearing from others, when I sent in the warrant for review. They, I just think people are going to want to know exactly what it says, so, I mean, myself included. Yeah. Well, I think it, what I'm saying is it's a work in progress, and that's why you have the space between posting the warrant and finalizing the motions, but I'd like to get this done as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So right. there is a CIPC meeting tomorrow night. So Article 5 is to see if the town pursuant to General Laws Chapter uh, Chapter 40, Section 8C, will vote to increase the membership of the Conservation Commission uh, from three to five members, and the new members be appointed for a two and three year respectively, and thereafter for a term of three years for 
uh, or pass any votes or votes in relation thereto. That's, um, That's it. Yeah, explanation. The vote corrects an, an action the town took in 1985 by adding two members to the three member conservation commission without town meeting approval. So we're hoping to get that back squarely done. Uh, I saw an email today that Barbara was talking to you about adding something else. The constables. The constables. But we don't need to go to town meeting to okay. do that. It's Thanks. it's a statute and we haven't followed it. So okay. We can just do it through we the the ballot it. the way we've got two. They need three really for alternating. Mm -hmm. Two the two we have their terms expired at the same time. It it became a problem. So at any rate we'll go to three, that'll be on the ballot that you'll sign that she'll prepare. So and it's statutory. April. We're just gonna correct it that way. Yes. That can okay. be um, so you, no, you want a motion the, it'll be at the election ballot. You don't need to do at town oh, meeting. Gotcha. That's what I'm saying. Election ballot November. Yes. The ballot November. will be right. <laughs> Okay. And there's no need to take ten. So, um, do you want a motion to sign this? Yeah. Do you want a motion well, to sign it? I'm sorry. Do you want a motion sure. to sign the warrant? Talk to each other. <laughs> oh. Yes. I, I don't have a problem. Make a motion to sign the warrant. Uh, I'll second that. Any further discussion? Nope. No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, right. We'll open our hearing. Right. We'll take that back. Since it's well after 7:15, we'll open the sewer rate. Hearing. Um, where do you want to start? <laughs> well, I think we start what we what the rate was for last year. Do you, do you want me to read this? Yeah. Do you want me to read this? Okay. Read so uh, this is FY19 sewer rate um, settings. Uh, so baseline conditions entering into the this hearing. Um, FY2000. 18 sewer rate is ten ten dollars per thousand gallons of usage plus the base service fee of two hundred dollars per year one hundred dollars per billing period the fy 2018 year-end retained earnings balance as of june 30th 2018 was approximately nine hundred twelve thousand and twenty one dollars these funds are inaccessible until they are certified by dor likely september 2019 um, the FY19 wastewater budget is $809,612. Beyond in addition to the approved FY19 sewer budget, if the sewer commissioners set the FY19 sewer rate at 11.75, which is a motion I, I think I'll make, um, per 1,000 gallons, um, with the same annual service fee of $200, we would be able to advance the framework of the proposed wastewater capital program begin maintaining a reserve fund balance uh, of approximately one million, um, more likely secure um, the most advantageous grant loan combination via USDA uh, RD, um, advance a conceptual design phase ahead of the spring 2019 town meeting to confirm budgetary costs and begin work towards a shovel ready project. Um, this results in the in a, an additional 40,000 in revenue towards the retained earnings goal as well as um, an additional 100,000 towards grant loan funding applications and a preliminary conceptual design of the wastewater treatment facility upgrades for phase one this would translate to an average annual sewer cost um, of 1.08 of median household income um, the USDA RD underwriting threshold for maximum grant eligibility is 1%, or greater than 1% of medium household income for average annual residential sewer costs. Um, alternatively, if the sewer commissioners do not plan to advance the wastewater capital plan for the above criteria, consideration should be given to setting the FY19 sewer rate at um, $11 per thousand gallons which result in the town's goal of increasing the wastewater reserve fund towards the target of one million, approximately one million. Well, uh, two years ago when I, I first looked at this and I was uh, faced with that improvement at the South Deerfield uh, facility, um, one of the things that uh, really stood out to me was the um, I guess you want to say inability of the town to secure funding for this or to get grant, I shouldn't say funding, to receive uh, grants for this. And I was surprised to hear that 
you know, the, the state looked at what we do in South Deerfield as, you know, like we don't charge people enough money or what we're doing is, is running the, the ship on a, a very tight string or, or however you want to word it, that our rates were so low that they figured we didn't need the money. Um, and at the time, I, I was very um, much interested in, in raising the rates only to save more money to make improvements along the way, not necessarily to, to create, uh, you know, a, a larger pot of money. Um, and then we ended up raising it a dollar that year and then another dollar um, the subsequent year. Uh, so that gets us to the $10. Um, I, we didn't receive a whole lot of flack, uh, you know, here in public, but on the streets mm -hmm. I heard about it a real lot. And um, I don't, um, after listening to that presentation yesterday, um, you know, I, I know that all of these things need to get done. And, and I understand how these engineers, you know, come up with their prices. Everything is, is an estimate of, of course. You know, what other projects do and stuff like that. Um, I, I just think that it was, uh, I know that we need to do this. I just think the prices were a, a bit high. And I just don't know if, um, if raising the rate to nearly 20% all in one year is really in the best, best interest of the community. We, we need to get this done. I, there's no doubt about it. We need to raise the money to pay for it. I understand that as well. Um, I don't know if the, the rate of 1175 w was chosen primarily because it shows a greater obligation of the community to fund this and therefore funding sources or grant money might look at the town differently. Mm -hmm. um, the goal was to get at this, at this rate, it gets it, we've done a good job in the last three years. I know it's painful, um, but we, for 25 years, we haven't done what we needed to do. So we, we by going to 1175, we meet that 1%, just, just about 1%, just over 1%. Um, to be able to apply for these grants and get the most we can get. I mean, the, the expense is gonna be there regardless. Um, exactly. For many, you know, many years down the road here as we, as we start to implement these, these infrastructure improvements that, that just have to be done. Um, you know, I, I don't, um, I don't see, I, I don't, I think we need to just, we need to do this to get this done. I, I don't want to lose commitment now to get these projects going. And if we can get the most most bang for our buck by doing that, and getting getting the most grant money we can get, um, that's what we need to do. There's, there's just no, no well, way the, around it. Well, the 1175 gets us so we can stabilize the rate, but it gets just over that one percent of medium income. So now we're eligible for the grants, like the USDA grant which does have money now. I mean, there was no sense in jacking up the rate if there's not an opportunity. But there is an opportunity. There is, the money is there for December 1st. So if we move forward, um, then we're, we'll be eligible for, by their criteria. At the same time, to save money, I think it, it, I would like to pay a little bit more money to <clears throat> Dave Prickett so that he can fill out the MassWorks grant which we are now becoming eligible for as well, um, with the when he does the USDA because the USDA is a lot of paperwork. So, and I said he would think he was going to do that for fifteen thousand. So, if at the same time we could get him to do the mass works, and then I the, wanted to add a couple more thousand dollars to work with. But the the only issue is that is is that because this is an enterprise fund, we cannot pull. We only have fifteen thousand. Right. So. What I was hoping to do is to get it from Kevin's budget. That's where then, it's coming from, 15000 And then if Kevin had runs into a trouble, we could go to the finance committee and say, um, you know, we had to use this amount for... You can't. So because it's an enterprise fund, the, the reserve... You I, we can't use the reserve fund no. until next year. So this in this transition period, why isn't that uh, un... un uh, I mean, unanticipated expense. It is, but but can only be used for um, uh, from general for general fund. It can't be used for an enterprise fund. That's that's what I found. Even out. if taxpayers are on the hook yes. for twenty five percent. Yes. Really. 
the lawyer said that. Well, Town this Council. all needs to get hammered out still, but from what I've been told, that's the case. So, so we have we have right. money here, but we don't have. Right. Right. And what, and what well, I we have a million dollars that we can't use. Correct. So for until September of till September. Next year. So we can't wait. So how are we going to get this money? Well, I. Go ahead. I Give think up. what we've heard from um, Dave Prickett, both in the smaller meetings we've had in the workshop last night, is we're not. We don't expect to be competitive for a MassWorks grant. At this point. No, but it's cheaper to have him just do the paperwork and then upgrade to the MassWorks application. It's I feel very impo it's very important to submit that MassWorks grant application because it sits there. We have to keep doing that for a couple of years. But if we're in the queue for two or three years, then am then I they mistaken? Though before you can apply for these grants, don't you have to have almost shovel-ready plans to go? You, and well, you have to have a plan. So, so and we don't, we're not anywhere near yeah. that spot. So, I mean, and that's kind of where I was talking about, I understand this rate, but we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're probably looking at not even seeing these types of plans until June of next year. So, mm. I... I don't think so. No. I think he was going to do it quicker. He you was going to do the, the 15th. Go ahead, Kevin. If, if I could. All right. So I've, I've had conversations back and forth with David, uh, Dave Prickett. Now, that is not due until September of next year. What they're looking basically at to that $15,000 is going to be going towards the USDA grant. The right. USD, right. USDA grant is a huge, cumbersome, yep. and there's a lot of things that we can pull out of that, the information that was already done through this grant right now if, if we were to go through the USDA process. We could extract a lot of that information. So the cost of being able to go ahead and turn that into um, a mass works grant uh, is is in September, which is right. past our fiscal Correct. year. Right. We're in the new fiscal year, we so we can go ahead and we can we can front load money into our budget to be able to cover that. Right. So the cycle isn't isn't it the summer? Is the mass works? Isn't it July? Dave, Dave, Dave told me September. It is September. Is what okay. Dave told me, and he's the guy that goes for the money. So, and, and, that, and I, I tend to agree with that because I remember when I first looked at the, the other project, we didn't realize or didn't find out that we were not going to get that MassWorks uh, grant until the end of September. Yeah, but usually you have to submit it. They, Se they September, September. Yeah. Dave said September is when he applies for, and that's what he told me. Okay, and, and he's the guy that does it. So my thought on this 1175 is we need to start banking this money for when these projects start coming forward. I mean, to then hit the hit the residents with a much higher rate in two years, when, when all of a sudden we find out we're ready to go, we're going to wind up getting, you know, I mean, it's a bigger jump. I mean, the whole idea and it was to do this gradually yeah. to get to build up that money. So we had it ready to go when MassWorks okay. went. Plenty. I thought Come we're on. here tonight to, 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 no, to set the rate for the coming year. My understanding is when you set the sewer rate, it's the day-to-day -day operations of that plant that the users are responsible for the day-to-day -day operations. And we, we are assessed and get a bill for that. When it comes to capital improvements, and for 100 years here in the town of Deerfield, capital improvements was done with the whole town no. working in there. No. And you can shake your heads and say no, it was capital improvements, the, the whole town, because the town shared in the tax rate and the whole, all that. So now we're talking about making slush funds and that those users, how many users do we have here? Eight, in 888. All right, and then what it cost us for that 800 people, and we're going to end up taking care of that whole plant down there. No. You know what, maybe with your $30,000 bond, let, let bond the town, and go down there and fix it. If it's in that bad a shape and in dire need of doing something, bond it and put it on the tax rate and we'll have it taken care of. I mean, we're setting a rate. We're not setting slush funds. And you guys are sitting here setting a sl slush fund. It's not a slush fund. It's used to pay for the infrastructure at that plant. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you, do you use, are you on the sewer? No. I, Kippy, are you on sewer? No. Carolyn, are you on sewer? No. And you're sitting there telling us what's good for us and what we should be doing. 
And yeah. you're setting our rates where it doesn't even affect you. That's because we're the sewer commissioners. I don't care what you are. You're, maybe, well, that's maybe the town how we got look, elected. Maybe the town should look into dissolving right. that from, from that. the board of selectmen. And that's not what we're here for. Your own that's not what we're here doing tonight. We're setting a rate. You're tonight. setting a rate, but Correct. not as a slush fund. Nobody well, said a slush fund. I don't have no, a slush fund you're anywhere. You're looking at how much money you can raise to to, to bank money for for future. Because you have all these costs in the future you need to take care of. You haven't done them for 25 years. Well, what about the rest of the town? The rest of the town is going to have some part in this. And we, if you came last night, you would 20, understand 25% is 75 I've been this. 25% right. isn't enough. Well, that's, a just, that's the law. So that's where we're at right now. And you and guys are setting our rates and you guys aren't even on sewer. Just because of where we live. That's correct. Certainly we're, not malicious. Where and, and several years ago, I was on when I was on the board of selectmen. We spent six hundred and fifty thousand bucks for capital improvements down there doing the areas, and the whole town paid, helped at town meeting, voted, and helped pay for those area areas because over the long period of time, with uh, uh, businesses and tax rates in town, everybody would benefit by that. And now you're putting it all on the on the users. That's it not fair. Right. That, that's not fair. Yeah. Well, one of the things that we're we, we're faced with too, Lynn, is like I said earlier, is that you know regardless of where we collect the money from, you know we're going to need to finance some of this, and we're we're trying to apply for grants. And when the state or the federal government is looking at a lot of different communities where to give their money, and they say look at the town of Palmer and they're paying thirty dollars per thousand and, you know Munson's paying twenty two and then Deerfield's paying ten they tend to shuffle the money in that area because they say those people need the help more and so I, I kind of get raising the rates but I was more in favor of going slowly with it we had Oxford Pickle that was here that was sixty five percent they use sixty five percent of that that sewer plant mm -hmm. Oxford Pickle isn't here anymore we end up, we have Deerfield Plastics. We had business and industry in town. The industry is gone. We don't have those people. So that 850,000 gallons a year back 20 years ago that we were using at the plant, we're down to where somewhere around 400,000 or just above 400,000 gallons. So we have a lot of room up to that 850,000 before the state but it hits us. Just so you know. No, I, I mean, no, no, I, I'm just saying a little bit of history here. Yeah. We bought up all the development rights in town. There's no room for growth. And now it's going to, everything's going to be put on the taxpayer. We're not going to be able to afford to live here. They, the sewer rates, they, I'll put septic systems in my back there. It's, it's not just so you, I know you understand, but it's not just, uh, you know, how much water it uses because even though it can handle 800,000 gallons. They, there's a lot of parts of that that are ready just to stop. And if it stops tomorrow, we have a problem. We don't have any backup. So we, we can't wait until that happens. We have to, you know, fix I these things. And, and, and one clarifier. And, and so, you know, for the past 18 months, this group of guys, for the sewer study committee, which there were members on that committee who are sewer users, um, you know, we, we identified a lot of different things that needed to get fixed. But as a group, we felt that we didn't have the expertise to say what was the most important. So that's when the select board and the sewer study committee got together. We interviewed multiple engineers, and this is where we're at. I've been following that. I have watching some of those meetings. I've been, I've been well, following that. So it, it is a tough thing, but if we if we don't do something like this now, and something fails at that plant, which could kind of happen, you know, then we're in a lot more trouble. It's because the investments weren't made. It's many years when people were on the select board and sewer commissioners, those investments were not made, and here we are. We're making them. We're moving forward. It hurts. It's painful to do it all at once like this. You know, I don't have an easy answer. But we have to we have to start moving forward on this. Did you? First. Uh, Bruce A. Peters. I was one of those members on the sewer study committee.
And uh, you know, hearing this rate setting, um, I would have to uh, believe that I would probably support the 1175 rate uh, for the simple reason, as, as you said, uh, none of this was put away and looked for capital improvements down the road. There is some issues that I don't think have even been addressed. I think, from what I understand, uh, uh, budget's been, you know, uh, it's a preliminary budget, but it sounds like uh, maybe some other issues coming up as far as transportation sludge disposal within the next 12 months on top of it, which is going to raise uh, the cost of that uh, as well. Um, as far as going up, I, I, you know, it hurts me as well as anybody else is 20%. However, um, it's still low on the overall state. Had this been done incrementally over the years, it would be at this rate now, if not higher anyway. It's just that it hurts like hell because it's had to be done in a very short uh, period of time. Uh, we can't afford to be below that 1%. And if this $11 rate puts us below that 11%, uh, I, I do not buy that. We, I, we have to stay above that 1% to take the USDA opportunity. And, uh, uh, and I understand what Lenny's saying, uh, but uh, you know, if you don't need it next year, then the rates can stay stable. So it's not being put away as a slush fund, okay? And if you don't need it for two years from now, it can stay stable. You won't have to increase them. But it's not being used as a slush fund. You can't, you know, nobody can just go in that and take it and say, I need some more money. Okay, it has to be voted and appropriated. So it's not a, you know, so, uh, you know, it's going to be now or later. Okay, the more we put away now, the less the rates are going to be uh, increased. At a the rates will be increased at a slower rate if we have something to start off with at this point. But that's my own feelings. Thank you. Also, Thank the you. rates over this is a 12 year plan or 13 year plan. Yes. And if we get grants, yes. then the overall rates will stay stable. Whereas if we don't get grants and something happens, we're on the hook. So right. it doesn't matter. That right. USDA grant that you talk about, is that, do they have the same parameters where you have to have designed ready in uh, things to apply for that? It's, it's, it's a long, um, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's eligible. We're in a really good position because our, our credit's good. We have we are organized. It's 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 a really a first come first serve. But it's also, are you really going to do this? And to answer that, Kip. I think from what Dave said last night, they kind of give a soft yes, right? They kind of say, okay, yes. you look looks good, but yeah, you come back to us when you have everything kind of laid out, right? And planned it, and it's designed. I heard um, that. Because I'm not, I'm not because totally it's, because that's part of it's right, it's right, only forty five percent grant, right? And and the, and and the rest is a forty percent loan, a forty year loan. I mean a two percent forty year loan. So it's not like a hundred percent grant money, but, but I, that's why I think, I mean we need to apply because before there hasn't been any grant money for a couple of years now. So all of a sudden, as of the December first, there's going to be some available, and that's why we need to get our application in. And then at the same time, I, f I feel like we need to start getting in the queue for Mass Works because that is an actual subsidy of, you know, a grant for the th operation. And then at the same time, you know, I wanted to make sure that we had another listening session, which I hope you would come to, Lenny, and talk about the stress of the rates so that we can apply for, you know, amend our MVP grant for the aeration tanks and that we could take that off you know, the cost to the, um, you know, sewer users. Bruce, Bruce. Yes, Kevin, if he knows. I don't know. Maybe Bruce knows. Well, Bruce Hunter, saying Gilly Road. Um, last night, um, there was a timeline, 13 years in cash flow chart presented. It said that they would need $100,000 in this fiscal year for this project to continue move forward on the timeline that they presented. I think that was for the engineering as well as the, um, he was talking about 15,000 for the actual grant application. I understand, that's completely different yeah. than what's shown on this chart. Right. This chart says 100,000. Where are we gonna get $100,000 mm -hmm. this fiscal year? Which page are you on? Page 17. There's a box somewhere with more copies of it if anybody wants to look. And 
And that was kind of my question, tax. whether by setting this rate, I was hoping to use some of that money towards that, but I, I, I don't, think, I don't we think we can, right? And that's right. kind of those questions I need to get answered for you. So the question is, if we cannot spend $100,000 in this fiscal year, there's really no need to bring it to 1175 because you, if you need some sort of drawings to apply to USDA, you won't have it until FY20. Yes, but we need to apply for the grant. And we have uh, to be I over that. I don't know what the prep requirements of plan presentation to USDA for them to give a verbal okay. If they need schematic drawings or preliminary plans, that might have been that 100,000. There was no explanation last night or no questions asked about it. Shift this down. So whether or not the 175, uh, 1175 is what is needed, um, I wasn't sure. On the, my understanding on the soft, if we did the 15,000 for the application, we get a soft yes. The 100,000 was for them to finalize the design plans so that we could get no. a complete rent, yes. Design is about 10% of your total yeah. cost. And so you're looking at $9 million right. yeah. the first year, that's first phase. So you're looking at over 900,000, yeah. almost a million dollars in uh, design, design fees. fees. I'll get an answer on that, Bruce. I almost think that he was thinking about shifting that yeah. down. That, um, because I don't... 20. He understood and through an email he understood we is that where the nine fifty this is nine fifty five plus the hundred is the million. Mm. Right. And that is or what the design, design is. Yeah, yeah, I'm almost thinking that But way. if you need something to apply. No, I think he question. only need fifteen to apply as far as, far as I understood. No plans, no No for a I soft yes. For a soft for yes. yes. Because but you, you just still won't have any money until September. Correct. Or or and July or about July first. July first. Yeah, and I think and I think to get to to get to that yes, if we needed that eleven seventy five okay. to show we're at a, we're at right. that one percent. That makes sense. I'm pretty yeah. sure we had to have. But I'll get I'll get a solid answer for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, fine. I'm pretty, pretty sure we had the eleven seventy five. It depends this, on what you decide a, tonight. This was a. The only other question I had relative to your the rate hearing was, I believe there's a minimum rate that's applied to people that use less than mm -hmm. X amount of gallons. Um, what is that minimum rate? Eight, $80. Eight? Eighty? $80. Is that going to change? I don't see why it should. I, I'm not in favor of it changing it. Okay. So that will remain the same? Right. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. That's why we're not changing the minimum as either, you know, the base 100. The service fee? Yeah. Right. So-called? Yeah. That's good. I'm glad you're not changing. Well, I, f I feel it's important to yeah. for those allow that need. people Skip. that want to conserve to be okay. Yeah, there's just a couple of things. Skip Olmstead, uh, Chairman of the Deerfield Finance Committee. Uh, we have a budget for the wastewater treatment plant. That budget starts July 1st. We will have a budget next year that will start July 1st. So when we talk about not being able to spend money until September, that's not true. We can spend it July 1st. What we can't do is we won't be able to go back in and touch retained earnings right. until next September, until they're right. Certified. approved by the, so, huh. you know, we, let's get, let's not get carried away on saying okay. we don't have any money until September. Well, so if you, if you vote the money, if the town votes the money at the town meeting in April, mm -hmm. then that money will be available July 1st, right. if not maybe before. I'm right. not sure. But you can it, check it's it. Only, it's still a couple of months. It is. It is. And, but, but the other thing that we probably need to do is rather than, than bemoan the fact that we may not be able to spend money, let's badger the Department of Revenue and say, look, this is what we need. How do we do it and right. meet your requirements? Right. We have this we, need. We got last year, uh, I think it was last year or a year before, we had the problem with the bridge over Stillwater Road. We got the uh, DOR or somebody from the state to say, go ahead and spend money. Right. So, well, we know, declared we emergency. Here, maybe we'll have to go that route. Yeah, but we declared emergency. Fine. We may have to do that. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, but maybe I we can't could believe ask. that we're going to be stuck right. without being able to, to do engineering plans for the next 12 months. It doesn't make I know, sense. just because, I think it's all just because we moved into that enterprise fund, but you're right, maybe we can ask that question from DOR. Let's, what? let's let them earn their keep. Is, is there any way that 
we're stuck not spending money until September. Out of that fund, yes. Until uh, it gets certified. Out of retained, retained earnings. But we do have a budget. And you have a budget. You know, right. Uh, in June, and, I think and you can start, you can actually, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you can start spending after town meeting if it's been approved. Because uh, it's just like free cash. You, you might as well go just go ahead and I mean, take the reserve July fund 1st, theories out of it yeah. and, and pretend it's just like a regular uh, standard budget. Because as soon as, as soon as we changed over to the enterprise fund, it was no longer a revolving fund. Revolving fund, you had the opportunity to go ahead and grab the money when you needed to. Now, like right with, now, with as, 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 a, as, a, as a whole right now with the town, with our regular budget, that's exactly how we're going to have to abide by the sewer budget. It's going to be exactly the same, where you have to wait for, you go ahead, you set your, set your budget, you have your monies, July 1st, you go do your thing, but then you can't do anything extra until your free cash is certified. So, so your return earnings, go ahead and pretend, call that free cash. It's the same thing for being able to figure out how this right. whole thing works. Correct okay. me if I'm wrong. No, right. Sounds right. But it, I, I get no, that, but well, how, how do we get from, fund. you know, yeah, applying the to the USDA and not having any money until May 1st to pay the engineer to, to start developing these plans? Are they going to go through it and develop the plans and expect to get paid after, or are they going to want money along the way? I think they might, I think they might work with us. Yeah, they might work with us. I, I, I don't uh, know, but we're not we'll going to find out tonight. And right. The question is... Let's ask the DOR. Yeah, it's a good, uh, good point. And if we have to call them up every two it weeks was, and say, oh, we got, there's a new wrinkle, then we call them up every two weeks and say, there's a new wrinkle. And you just, you could go to the yeah. governor's office. That, that's, yeah. I don't think that would happen again. <laughs> it's, it, unless the plant broke down, I don't think we could get the But DOR if the plant emergency. broke down, then we could declare an emergency. So that's not a suggestion, well, it's anybody. not quite far out of realm here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's, um, let's knock on some wood. I, I, if you decide to do it. If, if I could. I meant to put um, sure. yes. I, I know part of the question is, is where, where this $15,000 is coming from right off the bat mm. right now. Okay. Uh, I knew this was happening, so I front-loaded the money into my budget. It is in my budget underneath engineering. Okay. So the $15,000 is presently covered right now through my existing budget as we speak. Great. Okay. So. Not much more. That. Thank you. Kate. Right, but that's it. Okay. Do you have? Do you think we have enough to ask them to do um, a little bit more work? No. Okay. Um, what are you looking for? Oh, sure. I mean, that's just. What's this for? If you want to do that. If we want to move forward. I mean, you have to do um, something. We. It's for the. T it's for the tax collector. Mm -hmm. Town collector. Do, do you want to? Uh, I brought up the subject about uh, the different areas where, that we bill in, and that uh, I, I spent several hours today going over, you know, some of the information that um, Dave provided us, as well as getting new information from Brenda and Sarah, and that uh, I still came up with the, the same um, situation as far as the money collected in South Deerfield is 70 six and a half percent in an old deer field it's 22 or, or less and um, you know if you look at all of their engineering costs the uh, the south deer field uh, plant facility comes out to be 62 percent and then the rest is in old deer field um, and, and those are the numbers that they provided with for us so as we go forward raising you know this money for that it's it's still we need to get more money from the old Deerfield side. Um, I agree. I um, w one of the things that I would look at is we have a we're not doing phase two for three or four years out. So between now and that three or four years, Study we that. look at um, how we do separate rates, and you know whether we look at volume, um, whether we look at ADUs. But you're absolutely correct on that. The operation of the plant itself is probably, like you said, more or less even, but your costs to capital costs are much, mm. are the same, and you're not generating the same. And sometimes more, and, and like sometimes the headwards more. is more, you know, well, first yeah, phases of this stuff. Well, yeah, this even could be more expensive. So, 
we do have to take that in consideration. So I would say, I would, we're, we're focusing on South Deerfield first. So right. this 1175 seems equitable and that we should get right on trying to study mm -hmm. I agree um, with that. How, how we could do phase two so we can build up phase two rates because I think I'm sure there's something we have to do to make it be separate and 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 um, look at how we how we finance that space mm -hmm. too. Well, I, you know, about three years ago we did spend twenty thousand dollars to get a rate study, and the three of us looked at all the different things, and so did the uh, sewer study committee, and w we basically came down to you know like we need to raise X amount of dollars, and we decided just to go with a dollar. You know, was it arbitrary? A little bit, but it, it was really easy math because we, we had so many users and we knew this dollar increase would get us to the level where we needed. And we repeated that yesterday. So I don't see that even part of the $80,000 that we paid for this study mm -hmm. is also doing the same thing. You know, it's coming up with all these And I, I think it's as simple as what we've been doing. And I was, I don't know, surprised, but when Mr. Prickett said that we, this board, did a good job in raising that. It was like, I, I, it was like, what a big deal. I mean, all we did was a, it was a dollar, a dollar, you know. It, we didn't have to put a lot of time and effort where we spent a lot of taxpayers' dollars for him to develop this whole thing of, and yet he's telling us what we did was good, and, and that's all right, but it just kind of bolsters my point that we don't need to spend all this money for somebody to tell us how to raise the bills, you know. So. Well, I agree. I but I think we can figure this out because you look yeah. at the. I think if you look at Old Deerfield, um, you have to have a rate structure. Oh, is it Old Deerfield's first? No, South Deerfield is first. But this is all the. This is the different phasing and stuff. Okay, so um, phase two is six point six million. So, I think what you would have to do is um, figure out how you can back into that with that plan and those rates in the next three years. I think we have to separate the rates. Um, we have to vote to have um, management areas. Um, that's, we have to come we, we did, and then we, we, we did that, though. We no, we talked about it, but we never actually we had a physical we vote. We didn't we, have a vote? No. We, had, we talked about management areas. We talked about districts. We were going back and forth. We never actually had a vote. So we have to... What we should do for the next three years is separate and have management areas, and then you back into this 6.6. Um, I, 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 I agree with what you're saying. I think the only thing you might not be taking into consideration is the fact that there's a million dollars of upfront cost to, the, to get to this whole phrasing thing. And here again, you know, it's it's not fair that the money comes it's coming in lopsided. You know what I mean? And the same well, thing, we have it's, three it's years like, to sort it out. Well, not really. If you're looking to spend a million dollars this year to get these plans going, yeah, but we're only doing phase one, which is South Deerfield. So you're not going to do any engineering or anything. You're not going to apply for any loan for the old Deerfield. No, because that's three years three out. Years All right. We're, we're, we're only doing the 10 million first, first phase. Okay. And then oh, this, is, this is three years out. This is, this is okay. six right years or nine years out, and this is 12 years out. Right. But we need to work on it. Mm -hmm. There's no question. No doubt. And we need to, discussion. And we need to figure out um, how, how, you know, what grants we're going to get for them. And, or if there's none eligible, because the, you know, it's going to be the same thing. You have to have greater rates than one percent. Well, if we separate the management areas, then that is all going to change too. Um, Any other sure. comment? Or, um, or do you still? No, that's right. Go ahead, Bruce. Can you check. This uh, just a little step back. <clears throat> Um, you're going to keep the $80 minimum rate. Uh, so last year that allowed for uh, 8,000 gallons. So this year that would allow for 6,800 gallons. 
Um, yeah, what, if I haven't done the math. Yeah, but so I, that's I, just to clarify that that's yeah, what yeah. that would we, be. We didn't want to change the lower end rates. Right, but there you're were, reducing the right, amount right, of gallon that were, comes in under the minimum rate. Some of the people that did come, they were only using three and 4,000 gallons. Yeah, so. no, I'm just yeah. clarifying yep. that, that's all. It's, it's a good thought. Uh, mo most of the people that were, were not even up to that 6,800, yeah. so. Okay, just clarify. Yeah. yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Trevor, did you happen to do the math on uh, your percentage of, uh, I don't mean you, but the percentage of getting up that 1% if you went to $11? Because yes, I know this it is was pretty shy. Quick. It was shy. Yep. Yeah. And, and what is the importance of that 1%? It'll, it allows us to, to get a 45%. Triggers the grant. Triggers the grant. Of, of the That's the whole so issue. It's a loan grant, and it triggers the grant portion. Right. So if you're below that, you can't even right. You get the low-interest loan. We get the loan only. That's the whole idea, getting to that 1%. That's why it's 45% of the cost. And that's the USDA. Right. And if we can get to that and then hopefully stay, stay so a if little you, bit. You know, if you're looking at $10 million, that's $4.5 million. That's certainly a savings to have a little bit higher rate. Mm -hmm. Providing all the stars align. We'll do our best for sure. Or, and what do we do if we don't get the money? Just proceed anyways? Yeah, we, we, we have I, to, we're we have have to, to come talk up about with it. another way to yeah. finance. I don't know. Yeah, if we well, don't get we it, we're in trouble. Money, we can, yeah. Like, well, I, I, but that's, that's that. much more impactful. That's four and a half million dollars we have extra we have to come up I, with. I understand, but, you know, and just very mm -hmm. rough math, if this is $25 million, you know, even at the current rates, well, we couldn't pay that. And then we borrowed the money for 30 years. You, with this rate, you could afford to pay that. I mean, it would, it would be nicer to get the, the, the grants, mm -hmm. but you still would have enough money to pay that. Yes, but the idea is sure to get the you grants. You wouldn't have to borrow for so long. Right. Or. compared to a standard conventional 2% 20-year loan, you will look at a huge dollar difference. And, and for me, being a, a rate payer, in 15 years, instead of only paying $917, I'd end up paying $1,700. So uh, no, I, the rates, the rates are very would not be the preferred way to go. And, and I agree with that, Kevin. But I think like through this whole thing, and I don't want it to be derailed for any reason, so I wanted to have a, a, a brief discussion as to, you know, what, what if these grants don't come through or stuff like that. I don't want, like last time, I mean, that, that was, I think, a, a blessing in disguise because we learned, you know, how, how disastrous that really would have been. So, um, you know, going forward now, I mean, hopefully it would work. You know, we didn't have much discussion, and, and I don't think that this is the appropriate time, but, you know, about the size of the plants. But I don't, the only reason I, I think about mentioning stuff like that is because I don't want to, you know, get going off in the civil, at a, another sidetrack. You know, I want everything right. to keep going forward. Mm -hmm. But I think we should talk about that at our next meeting with Mr. Prickett. Yes, absolutely. This, this rate, it, at 1175, it looks like we're going to, it would generate the same pretty much till 2022. There's not really any impact if we, if we do this. And then it's very gradual and it's very reasonable. Still way below the state. And it's way below the state average. So we're, if, we, if we can do this, I think it's really important to try to do it. It's the best stabilizing route to go long term. If you're talking, because you're talking to 2031. So between 2019 and 2031, the rates are extremely stable and they're way below the state rates. So yeah. that, that seems like the best approach. Yeah. Hmm. I just, if, yeah, just throw something out for your consideration. If we looked at a $25 million project over 40 years, the payback 
just the principal on it is $625,000 a year. That's close to a dollar on the tax rate for the town. Add to that the interest cost. Now, if we had to borrow the money, we cannot borrow it at 2%. Right. Now, you know, so if we can borrow it from the uh, USDA. USDA for 2%, that's still, at least the first year, it's a $500,000 expense. Yeah. Put the two of those together. You're looking close to $2 on the tax rate. We can't, you know, reasonably so. I don't think that there's, and then if you say, look, this is not the town, we're going to put it on the district. Now you're talking, I don't know, a couple thousand dollars for each person, in the, each household in the district for that's why it's so important that we. It's impossible. We, that's like, that's why we have to just try to do this. Absolutely. And 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 there hasn't been money available, so we need to get in line for mm -hmm. December first. Yes. And and hopefully, you know, position ourselves to do it. And and, and we've worked really hard to make ourselves look attractive, and that's why, you know, I I, I have to support the 1175. I mean, the plant is give or take 50 years old. And. As, as is several other, I yeah. mean, most, uh, ca uh, most plants came from yeah. the Clean Air, Clean Air, uh, Water Acts of the 70s. So the only thing good about this is that 40 years from now, we're probably going to have to do it again, but a good number of us here aren't going to be here, so we won't worry about that. <laughs> she said she's going to be here. No. Does anyone else have anything to say? No. Uh, are you talking about relative to the rates or relative to the yes. entire project? The rates. 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 I guess not. Um. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So, I'm, uh, I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to um, set the fiscal year 2019 sewer rate at 11.75 per thousand gallons. It will be based on the actual water usage for the winter period and an abatement for a summer water usage use above 125% of each individual's previous winter use, resident accounts only, residential accounts only, as long as the abatement is greater than $25. No abatement for businesses or tenant-occupied properties. And I'll just add irrigation at this moment. Um, I think there's a mistake here. The minimum consumption billing should be 80 bucks, not 100. Correct. So we just need to is change that. that. Are you sure? It's, I yeah. It was. it was 80? Yeah. We're not changing it. OK. So I just want to change that. Um, I just made it 180. Yeah. <laughs> so. Kill it. Okay. Um, I second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So we'll have her fix that. But I'll sign one of these. Right. She's going to have to fix that. Anyways. Are you, are you in here? I don't know if that came from you or Bob. It's proper. Okay. Okay, so we'll ask her to do that. Um, we just have to have Barbara fix this tomorrow and oh, come back and what? see because it says um, $100 for the minimum consumption should be 80 Okay, I can probably fix that right now. Oh, tonight. You want it? And you added irrigation to the program. Yeah, this is her form. So. I know, and I'd like to put, you know, no maybe for businesses, tenants, or irrigation. And then I also do want to write um, a letter. We, sign. we did not sign that one. Oh. bills. Um, yes. For next yeah. show. Let me, let's. Yeah. I know that's separate. But I, I so. want to talk with her about that. Okay. There that's may be a reason she doesn't when have that. Did we on. sign all the warrants that you wanted for the town meeting? I didn't get them back, so I don't know how many you signed. Oh, well then we didn't sign them for you. We didn't sign any. No. Do you have something to sign? No is the answer. No, you don't have. I know. I gave them. You. I had mine, but I just passed mine down. That's it. Give them the words. Oh, yeah, it's a copy. Okay. There's no. Oh, the signatures on the. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the signatures on the back. Mm -hmm. right. But I want it with the whole. Yeah. Did you have? Do you want us to sign this? Or? Somebody, I told you those were the four originals I had. 
I know. I thought I you took them. Shouldn't be the um, I think we have to post them. Yeah, yeah. Here, I think we have to post them. I'll make a couple copies. Okay. Okay. Sign a couple. Um, we have to post them so that they sh can't have written on comment. All right, next issue. Item so is one. You'll come in and sign this. So. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. A bond issuance waiver request for mass development for Dumar. Okay, before we get to that, can I, since Kevin's here and he needs to go, um, yep. the towers issue, Pine Nook Road, okay. we've talked about that. Do you just want to, even though I didn't have it on yeah, the agenda? Yeah, No. Oh, no, that's um, different. Is that the letter? I'm not in favor. No, no that's We talked about it a little bit. I could yep. put it off because it's really to our benefit not to. To, yeah. to, we don't, it's, it's more for them than us to wait. But um, you know what? We'll put it on for the next agenda and just tell We're them the board the is still looking into it. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good luck. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Uh, so it's, that's it? This is the only agenda? Yeah. Okay. Barbara. She was going to give me the big one. The big one. The that she, yeah. Okay. It's not on the table? No. I, we just thought we'd rip off a hundred. I just made extras. <laughs> we don't. We only really needed one, but oh. you know. How I thought we had to post these. They don't have to be original, just one original. And the, plus, she has the one for her book, okay. um, which you can get at the next. Yeah, yeah I'm just going to find out what happened. I think we can take care of those. Right. Wendy, would you explain this to me? Yes. So I'm explain yeah, we, we've, sure. Trevor's okay. ready. So um, I'll explain the bond issuance waiver request from Mass Development for Dumont. So this is um, the best analogy I kind of came up with in my head was, so soccer stadium wants to be built in Deerfield, right? And typically the town or a city would say, we'll pay this guy, this people like $100,000 if, if you would build the stadium here. Select board's not doing that, the town's not doing that. But in place of us, Mass Development of Finance Agency is doing that. They want to help yeah. Um, Dumont build in this area. So what we're doing is kind of waiving the bond um, rights or we're, we're giving the, the authority over to the Massachusetts Development Finance Agency to help them get funding and financing and funding and bonds to build in that development. So it's really just kind of typically from what I understand DDIC would typically be doing this if it was over in the industrial park because it's expedited, we're here. Um, we're just stepping aside and giving our authority to do that to, to this mass development place to help them get financing. And they need it by the 8th of November, so we thought this would be the meeting to do it. That's as easy as I okay. can put it. <laughs> to write read this and read this. And thank you to Diane and Wendy to help, help me understand that. The original. Okay. Do you want to make a motion, so, Trevor? Yes, I'll make a motion to um, to sign the waiver request for mass development for the Dumont project. And I second Bond that. issuance waiver. So any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do you have us? I have a non-punched. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I think it's just the chair who signs. The chair signs and just the on the back of the first page, Kip. Yep. Um, if you not, me, did you move this? Would you like me to? I would like you to okay, do that. Okay, let me do that. So, um, uh, do you want me to read the whole thing? Yes. Yep. It's multiple pages. Oh, do you want me to read the whole thing just so we're done? It's right here, Kip. So where is the uh, Massachusetts Development Finance Agency? The agency has received an inquiry from HY E Partners LLC, the sponsor, which term includes any parent subsidy, uh, subsidiary or affiliate thereto thereof, 
as a potential sponsor of a project to be financed by the agency and to consist of certain industrial development facilities, the project, to be located in the town of Deerfield, Massachusetts. The project being generally described as follows. The acquisition by H. YE Partners, LLC, of approximately 2.87 acres of land located at Parcel C, Merrigan Way, the construction and equip equipping thereon of an approximately 24,400 square foot manufacturing facility and the lease of the facility to uh, Pilot Precision Holdings, LLC, DBA, the Dumont Company, and or Hassey Savage Company, Inc., together with other expenses relative thereto and to be used by the sponsor in connection with the, its business of manufacturing broaching tools used for cutting complex metal component parts, all as, uh, all as more fully described in the sponsor's tax exempt industrial development bond application and whereas the agency has notified the Deerfield Select Board in writing of such inquiry by the sponsor in compliance with section eight a of chapter 23 G of the Massachusetts general laws as amended and now therefore be it resolved the select board acting in the name and behalf of the town of Deerfield Massachusetts hereby requires that the agency assume the role of the select board in financing the project as authorized by section 8A of chapter 23 G of the Massachusetts general laws as amended. That's I think it. we have to ro have a roll call vote. Yes, you do. Okay. So that, um, I roll make that motion. Oh, no, you say for the resolution. For, for, oh, for the uh, for the for the foregoing resolution has been put before has been put to a roll call vote, and the result was as follows: I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Henry Camosa. I, Carolyn Ness. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. And then do you sign that? Do you have one that's not on the board? And just related to that, um, they're coming. Uh, I have asked for a TIF, and I'll have that for your next meeting. Okay. And then we'll talk about when that might be. Okay. When we go to get to my report, I. Have a bunch of things. Where did everybody Next go? on our agenda, we have one day liquor license for Public Yankee comment. Candle Tree Lighting on November 17th, 2018. Um, um, I make a motion to approve the liquor license request. Uh, one day license um, to hold on Saturday, November 17th for Berkshire Brewery. A second. Do you know what is the check? Is there any further discussion? Um, All right. Uh, I have a note that does no, it says it will come separately. I don't know whether it came in. Does, I don't know. Does Berkshire Brewery have a license to sell alcohol in their facility right here? Yeah, they have a pouring yeah, yeah, but they, they have, have a pouring, pouring license. It's yeah. different than a... Okay. Um, I mean, they can't go to another location. Right. They have to do this. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We should stamp those, yeah. I don't know because I don't, Pat didn't tell me. I know when they submitted this this week, um, we didn't have a check yet, but they, she might have, we might have received it today. I don't know, but it won't be issued until we get the check. Okay. Um, we do have the insurance certificate. And two, on, while we're on that topic, or at least I'm on that topic, um, <laughs> I, I, uh, we've sent a letter out to our frequent tra travelers seeking these permits to say they need to get them in 30 days ahead of their, your meeting. So we're not scrambling as we have yep. numerous Too times with them coming. Yep. And you know they need it tomorrow, and the meeting was posted or whatever. So yep. we're also looking into ways. And you know, please, if if you don't agree with this, whether this is something that you need to have a full board select board meeting to issue these permits, mm. um, I don't. I don't I know. I don't know what the legality is, but I would be fine with the chair. <laughs> Doing that. I feel like for the regular, a regular like Yankee um, Candle or Deerfield Academy, they come mm -hmm. regularly. But the thing is, you have to find out who they're doing it with. And right. I mean, that and changes, and that and I don't know. Right. I kind of hate to give that up because it's a little scrutiny. Mm -hmm. it helps. Okay. Uh, 
It's a request for comments from the ZBA on a solar project on Railroad Yard Road. So, um, oh. Well, Trevor had looked at it. Um, I, I didn't have a ton of time to look at the plans, but I did look at the plans tonight. And um, just reading over this, they're asking the zoning for, um, you know, normally for, for solar projects, there's a 100-foot setback. And um, on this project, they were looking for a, a waiver on that or, a, you know, a ruling that they could do um, a 50 foot on the front and 20 foot on the side and rear. Now, you know, it's along the tracks. So the rear, I'm, I'm fine with. The neighbors, I'm concerned. And the road, I'm kind of concerned with. So uh, that was my feeling. I, I have no problem on the track side, but. I'm, I'm concerned about the neighbors and yeah. making sure that they have. I w I, I'm not sure I want to have that buffer given up. Um, and my only other thing I, I felt is really important on these solar projects is we re re require some kind of bond or something to make sure that when their usable life is over, I mean, that's hazardous material. So you need to, I want to make sure somebody what's, can. What's hazardous on solar? Well, those panels and stuff, and you've got to big, dig up the concrete. I, I mean, I feel like you have to have a bond to make sure that they are willing to clean up and haul away the stuff. I'm what do we sure do on what, the others? I'm just curious. Yeah, I'm not sure what the planning board did with uh, the one on River, River Road. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, well, I mean, to Can me, that should be that, normal guess, practice. Because yeah. some, because these people sell did these things over and over, yeah. over and over again, and then pretty soon you, you make money, and then <laughs> you. Keep selling, and I, I, so the, to me, having a I bond. I don't believe for, that so the, the panels themselves so contain any that. hazardous yeah, material. Uh, uh, it's just the plastic and stuff. And the way a lot it's of all these recycling or whatever, so right? right. But a lot, of, a lot of these uh, installations now don't even use concrete. Yeah, they just wait. push like an I beam into the ground, so you can pluck those out. Well, then um, you wouldn't need very much of a bond. But you yeah. I, I still I'll think someone should be responsible for. In 20 years, making well, sure you can either replace them or... I remember a conversation that we had up. with the folks from Chicago, and, and they supplied the planning board. And I don't know if they did post a bond or not, but they supplied how uh, there are these companies that already are making deals with them for the salvage rights for this. So, so yeah. I think we could request this zoning board um, a condition of their approval would be the, um, de a decommissioning plan. I think that would go to the planning board anyways. Whoever's, I mean, I don't know who the permit granting authority right. is. Who's the permit granting authority? The planning board. Oh, well, this then the planning board. Is, yeah, the planning this, board. These are, They're just asking for a variance from, for the setbacks yeah. because, it, you know, mm. the, the parcel's long and, and skinny and stuff like that. Will we get another one from the planning board for this for same what? project? Like Comments. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we could still fill this. You could still fill that out and, and go to the ZBA. They could, mm -hmm. they could have the same information that the planning board does. Like this is yes, from the ZBA. Also, the planning board also Comment. does send out requests for comments to all the other, you know, boards right. and towns. So. Right. Bruce? Oh, is that you? Is there only one variance request? It's no, two. It's two. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was two. Well, the setbacks and for the size of the uh, array. Setbacks. I think, I think two the, different, it's, it's like a north and a south end. Two different zonings allow different. One is large and the other one's extra large. And I think this is over two, it's 2.7 megawatts, so it's an extra large. In that zone. In that zone. Bruce? Uh, I think the bylaws only go up to two anyway, so is that a variance for that 2.7 as well? Yes, but it's only because of that district. Across the street, I think they have a six megawatt, but that's allowed. Yeah. 2.7? Six. I thought the extra large only uh, was allowed up to two. By, uh, yeah. by laws. I think it says up to two. I think and up to two is the large. After the extra, that. extra large, I thought, was up to two. No, I think the extra large is up to six. I don't, know, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know why, but I think I, I think just want to value this says, at this point. If it's solar generation greater than two megawatts requires a site use variance in commercial zones. So is it industrial across the way, and that's why it's different? I, I think it's just commercial. Let's see. I have the map. I'm not sure. I I, the zoning I map's in this package. Map. <clears throat> Depends on how old that is. The map? I think. It seems to have marijuana. Oh, it's 2013. 
I think that, that section of the railroad, could I see that real quick? It's not in your packet? Okay. Probably not a colored version. Colored? I think, I think it was changed, wasn't it? The letters. <laughs> I think so, too. That's 2013, but I don't think it's changed other than... I, you know, that, that's, it, that's commercial, it's not industrial, so... Right. But I, I, do, I do believe that that changed. I think so, because okay. we're ha running into problems, but I can't remember. So does anyone okay. want to make a motion for a make, I'll write it comment? out if you come to consensus uh, on what you would like to say here. I, I don't think we have to make a motion. I think we have consensus. It's just yeah. we want the buffer. We want to be sure the neighborhood, it's least impactful in the neighborhood, so we're not willing to give up the buffer maybe for the, or we want them to consider the buffer for the neighborhood. And although we have no problem, on the railroad track side. I think it's important to clarify that on one side it's not a problem. And then I would like, I, I do think it just, it's important to say well, what are you going to do at the end of useful life? We don't have to say a decommissioning plan or, but you know, having a bond or some kind of idea what's what's going to happen at the end of its useful life is I think it is important for us. That's These things are all over the place. So mm -hmm. yes, and I think okay. yeah, definitely to have a decommission plan would sure. be I, something I would hope we would include if you're putting that in the list. I'm writing things down and then I'll you put you it together. Be Thank clear you. about what you want okay. me to put <clears throat> when you all say something. Do you want to say something? <laughs> I have buffer. Is this a buffer for the neighborhood slash residential area? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm concerned not about decommissioning the plan. It needs to be looked at. I'm, I'm not willing to be supportive of that if, What's people, that if people have a problem with it, giving up the buffer. I understand they're going door to door rather than having a community meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. talking with people. But, and if the, neighbors, if, it's, if the neighbors are fine, then okay. Um, okay. I'd it? like to hear feedback from the neighbors for sure. Yeah. So if anyone out there wants to well, they'll, let us all know. The, all the neighbors will have an opportunity at the planning board meeting to, Great. to speak about that anyways. <coughs> so, okay. Um, you have Do we have an update on the River Road spraying at the UMass facility? Um, no. That, I, I asked Wendy to put it back on because after the meeting last night, uh, I mean last uh, week, yep. I... I was driving home and I was thinking, you know what, that, that letter is going to go in the circular file. No one's going to pay attention to it. So what we have to say yeah. is we would like the MSDS sheets, you know, your right. chemical sheets, mm. yep. and some kind of um, a notification to the neighbors, the abutters, of when you're going to spray. So we know what they're spraying and when they're spraying. And we said we would like some kind of to meet with you before March. Yeah. And then we say in the letter, if we have no response, then we're going to issue a cease and desist order. But that really should be a Board of Health vote. Right. And I think I we think would send this registered mail mm -hmm. so that we know that they actually got it. And yeah, I, I just mean, we have I to have consequences. Know. Nobody does anything because what? they want <laughs> no. to. And I so want to give them just, the opportunity to. I wasn't at the right. meeting. To, I mean, I mean if we're we'll not, ask and then have them come but back. But I think getting, getting the, what they're spraying so and, and a notification to the butters is a normal so thing. Right. And then we can discuss, well, when are you going to spray? <laughs> you know, in the middle of the day, when people are out in the yards, this is not a good time. Right. You know, my understanding is there's least amount of drift usually in the early, early morning. So if you're going to spray, you're going to do early morning. People are notified. They can stay in their house or they can close their windows, whatever. But... You know, this just asking them to have conversation with us is that's just going in the circular file. So oh, a demand. I that's why I, I think we have to have a consequence and I you know, so that's why I would like to make a motion as the Board of Health that we send this letter, registered mail, and that if we don't hear from them by March that we issue a cease and desist order so that they aren't doing the spring. I mean we're going out of our way in the Mosquito District to work with Dan and Benina uh, Conlon to protect the bees and, you know, do everything as best we can for our neighborhoods and mm -hmm. only target bad mosquitoes, not every other nuisance mosquito. And here 
they're spraying randomly next to people's houses. That's not okay. That's not a good thing. So I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay. Next and then is tick testing. I, yeah, I we're still doing that, so we'll move on. No, I listen. I need to apologize. <laughs> me, like there is one person in here in Deerfield that had a tick. They went. I anticipated this problem. We had a CDC grant. The money was paying for the tick testing. We voted some money um, at town meeting. I anticipated that there would be some kind of issue, so I spent a lot of time talking to the UMass lab and the people that run the books that when the CDC money ran out, it would be seamless to our money. And they hired someone new, the person left. He didn't understand the notes or what something, and they just deleted all that. So I didn't find out about it till two o'clock last week, last Thursday afternoon, that there was a problem. And someone in Deerfield had gone down in the morning to get a tick test, and, and they decided not to get the tick test because it was gonna be $150 instead of the 15. And we don't know who that was. So I feel terrible. If that person still has a tick, they should go down because um, I was notified about it from another person that couldn't figure out how come it wasn't subsidized on the, mm -hmm. the report. And so we looked into it and I called down there. They were very accommodating, tracked down Brenda, found out that we hadn't paid anything, we hadn't used our money. And so um, we got it sorted out. The, it, the web person put it on, fixed it, and it was working the next morning right away, and everything was fine. But it was that one day of not tick testing, and it was a person from South Deerfield that had a tick bite that didn't get tested, and I feel terrible about it. Um, well, thank but you. But it is working now. Jumping on that and getting it straight now. Yeah, but it is working now, so it's all good. And we'll have after. Um, in, in the winter time, we'll have a, you know, a, a tick bug night where we'll analyze what was going on this year with mosquitoes and ticks. Looking forward to that. We don't have any appointments. Is there any other new business? I have a bunch of things. Yes. Um, okay. Well, it, it's not on the agenda, sorry. Um, but you all received the email from the personnel board. This is here. I don't know if you want to say anything about what their recommendations were to the select board. Um, going forward regular, um, in reference to the compensation plan. Um, I, I reprinted it, but you did get this yep. via yes, email. Yes, have it for last meeting. Yep. Oh, do you have another? Um, so the recommendation, um, I don't know, I'll let do you. Do you want to read it? Yeah, okay. go, go for it. So, hello, Kip, Carolyn, Trevor, cool. at the October uh, 15th, 2018 personnel board meeting, a motion was made to recommend to the select board not to go forward with the requested fifth week of vacation time for department heads. The board voted all in favor of said motion. A motion was made to recommend to the select board to one, raise grade one, step one pay rate by 24 cents to 13.50 an hour for FY20 to be in compliance with the minimum wage laws. Two, to continue current FY19 compensation plan for FY20 with same grade and step amounts. And three, um, only those employees who are at step 10 FY19 will receive a COLA amount to be determined for FY20. The board voted all in favor of said motion. So to I just want to make a comment. Okay. Um, part of the reason why they voted um, for uh, or make a reference to uh, the new state um, minimum wage laws. I come back from a DOR event, which the attorneys presented at Department of Revenue, and they told us, despite years of the town public employees not being subject to the minimum wage law, they were. So I was fresh back from that, and I informed them of that. Well. I've since discovered they were wrong. <laughs> so I don't know, Bruce and I have talked about it, whether or not that still impacts or doesn't impact the recommendation they made to raise the, there's nobody being paid at that amount right now. But, and I think I sent you what happened in Amherst. They, they, you, towns are deciding to follow it uh, for a variety of reasons, but you're, we're not required to. Uh, my feeling as a member of the personnel committee was that 
we needed to pay the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. Agree. It was affecting one grade in step, grade one, step one, which would be the lowest paid person in town, and we haven't hired anybody at that grade, and we'd increase it um, annually to meet the required minimum wage. I think it's right just thing. because municipal employees are exempt doesn't mean that the town of Deerfield needs to exempt municipal employees. I agree with that. Yeah. Just at this moment in time, we're above the minimum wage. So I think it would be a year or two, uh, yeah. another year before we'd fall behind if we did nothing with that step, mm -hmm. grade level, that step. So do you want to make a motion to follow these recommendations? Is that what we're doing now? Uh, or is this just I up for discussion? I didn't have it on the agenda, so I... Yeah, why don't we wait? Um, and we okay. have some time. Um, I, I was right. just going to say, because I, I think I would want to make sure we had some discussion on the COLA. Mm -hmm. um, we usually use the Social Security COLA, the CPI, but there's also the New England COLA and, mm -hmm. you know, different COLAs. And, um, you know, at least we should discuss them and then figure out. Bruce, were you, were, was the personnel board, do you, do, does that board typically look at COLAs or is it just the, our board? I didn't know if no, you guys do. looked at it as they well. Make a and have you had thoughts on of doing do. that? I think last year, um, Wendy made the uh, COLA recommendation. What was it? You came up with the I, I COLA. That, you think, didn't make the COLA I think recommendation. the finance committee chairman. <laughs> but you came up with a percentage. Um, uh, whatever that percentage yeah. is, uh, we discussed 2% mm -hmm. and felt that was an adequate increase. Okay. Thank I, you. I actually, you can bench it more, you can choose. There are a whole lot of right. options. I know. Or what happens in the listservs that I'm on and people ask, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And this isn't just some of it's contractual and some of it is you know, none. Mm -hmm. And 2% uh, is what I saw over and over and over again. Well, again. Some, some lower and some I, higher. I, I think we should, if we're going to talk as a COLA, then we should pick a CPI right. of that, some that. sort to base it on. And we should decide which one we want to do. I, you know, just because everybody else is doing 2% doesn't mean that that is a real true COLA. Right. And so we should have some discussion on it. Okay. That's all. I mean, I'm not against the 2%, but, you know, we should have a discussion and look at what the Social Security one is and different. Can you know, to the select board comments and stuff? Um, uh, yes. I would just like to um, uh, say the South Deerfield Women's Club will light up our town common on Friday, November 30th, beginning at 6 p.m. There will be live music, hot cocoa, um, cookies, and we'll gather to sing uh, winter songs. Everyone in the community is invited to join in. This is the third year the Women's Club has raised funds to light the trees, the fountain, and several decorative deer on the common. Um, the lighted deer are part of the club's um, project to keep the deer in deer field, and I think, what did they have, like 35 last year? And so they're trying to increase that across the town. Um, the select board last year did create a tax deductible donation account to light the trees um, so you could contribute that to the and you could send your check in to our money into the lighting of the common fund uh, town of Deerfields and Pleasant Street oh no Conway Street 8 Conway Street South Deerfield um, last year I went and it was really nice it was just a wonderful thing but Mostly, I, I really appreciate it because we roll out of here two or three nights a week at least, and I drive through at least once a, a week uh, at night, and it's just it's so cheery and nice to have the lights. Mm -hmm. I think it's just it a wonderful thing special. to do all winter. So um, I really, really appreciate the Women's Club doing that. I think it's a wonderful thing for the community, and so I hope people will support it. And that's, again, that's November 30th. That's a Friday afternoon beginning at 6 p.m. Great. I just, there was a, a notice um, here uh, for Playful Engineers with Jay uh, Minkita, um, November 3rd from 1 to 3 p.m. Deerfield Town Hall, um, a free hands-on workshop for kids in grades K through 6 and their families. Jay guides and inspires participants to construct delightful, complicated contraptions that perform simple tasks. Um, so there's, it looks, looks really fun, sponsored by the um, Deerfield Rec Department. It's free, so please come, bring your kids, and um, do some cool engineering stuff. Again, that's November 3rd from 1 to 3 at the Deerfield Town Hall. 
Well, you had a few more items? Yeah, not much because we've yeah. covered them during the meeting. Um, well, first I'm going to, I'll turn to Diana because she's been working on a couple special projects in the IT and landfill solar. So, <clears throat> so the municipal IT project, um, we have had, um, we had our original kickoff meeting and then we had a follow-up meeting with departments and um, this, by the end of this week, we'll have made some decisions about moving forward with the network and we'll be letting Northeast IT know right. um, and then they'll be implementing those. So we are moving along pretty uh, quickly with that project. That's so great. We've determined the status of the network and what changes need to be made. So thank Katie you so I'll much. Be yeah, going that's a huge help. Tomorrow. And then the solar landfill, um, we did get the RFP out. Um, we ended up getting the SMART, or Meta. it's called a Meta Grant now, but it's dealing with the SMART program, the energy yep. new program used to be called an SREC program, now it's called a SMART program. Um, so we, the town had applied for a grant for technical assistance so that we could have a, um, a professional expert in the solar industry work with the energy committee to do the RFP and to uh, be there for the responses as well so that we can make sure that the financial model for the solar landfill development is the best and most advantageous for the town. Um, so we got that contract, we got the grant to support that technical assistance and we've contracted with uh, Beth Greenblatt, mm -hmm. um, who is a uh, who's pretty much well known for that in in the industry, um, and she started uh, got the RFP out the door already, she or actually it uh, went on the central register the advertisement, and the RFP is completed. We put the ad in the newspaper, so that'll be in the next couple weeks, and mm -hmm. there'll be a mandatory uh, walk through, I believe, the first week of November um, for bidders, and then the bids are due the end of November. The right. responses are due the end of November. So and it was also sent to the interested party who came before the board a few weeks okay. ago, and they they saw it and had, you know. Yep. So. Yep. And there'll be a, um, I believe there, Wendy's going to talk about putting together a small uh, committee group to um, to review the proposals along with Beth and make some decisions. So. So. We right. could get a lot. I get calls every week, so. <laughs> and Beth sent them out to a, a huge yeah, she list. She sent them out to like about 170 <laughs> um, wow. solar you know, people in the solar industry. So yeah, yeah we, we expect a pretty robust response. Great, so. that's great. You all set? Nope. Okay. Um, uh, I just wanted to check with meetings. You were not gonna meet for three weeks, but I think we really should meet in two weeks. And we just wanted to check with, um, I think, so Kip, can you meet on the 7th and the 28th? I thought we were gonna do the 14th and 28th. Do you wanna change that? Yeah, yes. Just because we're having a special town meeting. Well, it's right. a special town meeting, so it's like two back-to-back yeah. -back meetings. Friday, she said two minutes ago, I just put it in my phone, sure. <laughs> you weren't paying attention? <laughs> I was paying attention. I was reading what you put. So the so 7th you'll be, you'll be. and the 28th, and then, of course, the 15th is special town meeting. Version. I just wanted to mention real quick that... Um, well, I'm not done. Oh, I'm sorry. Then I'll mention I get stepped later. on, you know. I'll mention later. Well, I always forget if I don't... You go then. No, because I won't forget. I have notes. All right. You have notes. I have so notes. we're switching off. So also, we're switching over till six p.m. That's on, correct. On the November seventh, except for the fifteenth. Right. Yes, that's the fifteenth. The special town meeting is um, November fifteenth. We need to have thirty-five people for a quorum, and we're going to vote yes. <laughs> that's not. That's anyway. Um, I'll put Pine Nook Road on the next uh, meeting agenda. I will put. Um, uh, what's the other thing? Uh, the, uh, the TIF for Dumont on the next agenda. Um, just remind you, tomorrow night, Capital Planning is meeting and Finance Committee. Um, I've also been working on this tree grant. I think I've talked about it before. It's due on the 1st. I've got to gather some more information about maintenance plans and things like that. So that's taking time. Um, and I spent a couple hours today, required hours, at a for our new multi-hazard um, update mitigation update plan, um, FEMA and MEMA bureaucracy, but we'll, we'll handle it. And FERCOG folks were there who will be working with us on updating that. Um, I think that's it. So before I forget, um, I had a really nice meeting with the water commissioners. You have one more thing? Well, it's in your packet, the letter from MassDOT uh, mm -hmm. with the settlement agreement with Greg Gardner for the tree cutting. Yes. Sorry, I'm done on Facebook. It's um, on Facebook, yes. That's quick. Um, so, is that right? Um, 
Because he didn't check his email first. Yes, I, <laughs> I read it through an email. Um, so I had a good, really good meeting. I, I said a couple weeks ago that I wanted to have a meeting with the water department, water commissioners. Um, it, it was really nice to get to, to know them. They're a great group of people. And I met uh, our new water commissioner was there. Um, he had some really great Supervised. ideas for the superintendent. superintendent. Yeah. Oh, right. right. Commissioner sat on the other end of the table. Um, <laughs> so the, uh, he, he is wonderful, really nice. Um, very excited to help with the common oh, and the, nice. the fountain. He, in wow. Florence, he's done one down there. He said they can hook up, recirculate the water. Not a big deal. Uh, he knows how to do it. He said, get me a backhoe. Kevin, get me a backhoe, and I'll, I'll do mm. the plumbing. So there's, uh, there's a, good, a good fix there, I think. I'm really very excited. excited. And uh, he, he's very excited to work with, with uh, Kevin and our town to just kind of keep things rolling along. So it was In just the meantime, they'll keep the water on? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, they I, just wanted to look at I wish, because uh, I'd asked them, and I, we should let them know again, uh, we've got people were worried about their water where they were flushing hydrants. Yes. They should let us know, uh, I guess Pat knew, but I, we would do that on code red for that section of town. That, I think we can isolate a code red call to let people know about that because there were the all flushing. kinds of, what's going on, what's going yes. on? And I, I, I've told the districts over and over again, please let us know. We can help get the word out about, yep. you know, let people, um, the public we, know about these can, things. You know what, the only <coughs> thing I'm worried about that, if we rely on code red, we have to make a real effort to get people on code red because right we do every time we use it you bring mm -hmm. that up and we I know we do another effort I, know. I don't know what the numbers are right now um, can we can we put a little um, you know like cut a piece of paper into like four parts or some you know four little strips that say please be sure to, you know to sign up for code red in the tax bill or something well the, can I I'll give you my personal opinion I think it's a great idea and a great service and I first signed up for it, but it's been several years. I got off of it because my phone was lighting up all the time. Oh, school's canceled, or this a tree fell across yeah, this thing. We, we, we can know, limit it things. It was like the town crier, not really an emergency service right. thing, you know? We, so, you should not get those, because no. you're well, getting, I, you're getting, you signed up for the wrong thing, because <laughs> you signed up for the school one, I think, because the code red right. is our, our emergency, <clears throat> and you can't get mixed up with the school one. And so our code red, we, we do That's the... That's a classic example of we need to educate people. That yeah, because... They must not know. They must right? not know. It says on the website that you can do that. And yeah, because our yeah. code red is we do the town meeting as a practice, right. and if something happens, we do that. But the schools, mm -hmm. all the school cancellations and all that kind of stuff, that's a school code red. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not code red. They have a... Yeah. Oh, what is it ever? Mine was a code red thing. Because I, I went into John. Maybe to theirs is code red too, but you huh. signed up for the wrong one. Well, we'll have Maybe to just yeah, discuss with the schools, make sure they're using the right one. We'll make sure yeah. we're, you know, our code just get red, people educated. Like I'm signed up for code red. I don't, I don't get those calls. <laughs> I do get them from school, but I don't know. Yeah, but that's a school code red. You're, You're signed up for school. Is there anyone in the public has a comment to make? There must be a game on there. Yes. Is there a game on there? Sorry, There's two. I know the game's on. But Someone behind you was about to speak. Okay. But he's letting you go. Two comments. Thank you. Um, the notification of uh, DOT relative to the tree planting. Mm -hmm. uh, could we have that put on the website? Sure. I think we could, right? What, what, what well, I'm curious like whether they're going to be able to grub the stumps that are there. Already did. No. The gr what's grub? They then? did. They're all grubbed. Yep. What's a grub? I mean, trees are there, too. The trees are there. I saw what? it. I, I thought what do you the, mean stump not, we don't the stumps are still there. The growth is still there. The undergrowth. All the, all the new the growth. growth is there, but the bigger stump, well, I saw them taken out, too, when I was going by. Okay. I, but with the machine they had, I doubt they can get some of the bigger ones. That was my concern, yeah. that they've now planted trees I, and whether it's going to be grubbed. I, that, that's, and, and, well, I shouldn't say. It's somebody else's problem. The state, <laughs> is, the state is handling it. It's, uh, it's state job. contractors, state yep. supervision, and Thank if that's you. the way they feel they want to do it, then. That's fine. That's fine. Um, the second comment, there was a meeting last night on the wastewater collection and treatment facility, and I was unable to attend, but I would like to ish, um, submit some written oh, public comment. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Why don't you see him before you say thank you? No, I'll <laughs> say thank you anytime I get something from Bruce. I know. Yeah. I'll, I'll go make copies. Okay. Mike, has, Mike has some copies. Oh, then I'll wait. <laughs> I'll make copies. I'll make copies. Thank you. 
Mike Killeen, 112 Sunderland Road. Uh, Carolyn, when you were speaking about the MSDS sheets, if you ask for SDS sheets, it'll give the actual instructions that you could just like give to the residents. It has oh. way more information and it's. So, so um, I think Dick mentioned that. SDS? SDS. SDS. It's yep. just recently starting to replace MSDS because okay. you don't have to be a chemist to get it, basically. He's right about that, yep. And then, uh, can I, I show you a picture, Kip? Sure. I, um, I don't know. I'd have to look at it. That's our brain. Can I see? Of course. If you zoom out, it'll make more sense. That's the substrate on our brand new school roof. Is that the kindergarten one? Oh, yeah. I see yep. the birdhouses. Yep. Those are the spaces in the uh, panels. They're mm. buckling and lifting. Are yeah. they buckling? Yeah. They, I noticed it a lot slighter than that. Probably mm -hmm. last year I tried to bring it to a few people's attention. I remember seeing that, but yeah, I haven't seen it that bad now. To care. And then this was just picking my daughter up from Girls on the Run the other Can day. Can I see that? Okay, thank you. So is it, it's under warranty, isn't it? That was going to be my Check. next question. It I is. I saw oh, bonding on the agenda, and I was curious if that was... We should have that looked at. Uh, oh, yes. No, we have a 30 year, uh, a 30 -year warranty. Look? You have a 30 year warranty on Through the shingles. Through the manufacturer. Yeah, yeah well, being a roofer, yeah. I know that 30 year warranty is worth about as much as my 1997 S10. Actually, we have a 50 year warranty. Is it 50? Because it's an insurance but that's policy. That's on the, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. But that, again, let's have it looked is at. on the shingles, and that's, that's not a shingle problem. No. But it, uh, I just think someone should do something about it before. That's our buddies at RDA. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that no to our attention. It. I appreciate how that. Do you, what do you, how do you fix that? Can you? Um, you have to remove the shingles and remove the well, panels. I could take a picture. Because what happened is the panels, they, they, have, they came out with this uh, foam that was glued to pieces of plywood, and they were put on like that. But because the foam and the plywood didn't match, you didn't cut them. You just set them in spots. Remember I showed you? I think it's still on my phone. You have, there were places where I could put my thumb. The gap was so large, and there are other places so that were this touching. So is, this is an architectural? Architectural thing, 100%. And OK, right. so we start the process of architectural. Yeah. Um, well, we call RDA, and I'd love to call Pink. Want me to do it? I'll call Pink tomorrow. Good, thank you. And uh, I will, I will, I will, I'll love getting on her about that. Perfect. Such a sparkle in your eye. Oh, oh there <laughs> is a sparkle in your eye. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with that. Yes. Um, and Kip, if you need help, my husband is an expert on construction disputes. Oh, there'll be no dispute. About it. No, That's no, just not. That, that can't taking stay. Taking them back yeah. for, yeah. you know, faulty yeah. work. Yep. yep. It's got to come back up. Well, I, I think I think I think uh, Pink would be a good person to start with, mm -hmm. and then I can call my buddy over at RDA, Jeff. What is Jeff's last name? The one who wanted this roof. I do want to say one more yeah. thing. Go ahead. Okay. The police station roof project is completed. It was done very quickly, and I think we're quite pleased with it. And yep. I would like to let them know that. <laughs> well, would, so. they, I think they did a great job if they just come pick up their trailer and broken yeah. tractor. Know, yeah, <laughs> they're they're going to bring get is that uh, yeah, Thursday or Friday. Yeah. yeah, that's what they said last Thursday and Friday, and the <laughs> Thursday and Friday before that. Uh, well, then we own it. <laughs> well, well I, I did go <laughs> to see the broken John. thing. I did go to see John um, to ask him about it too, but uh, I, I don't know. All right, uh, motion to. Uh, um, the only thing is, oh. well, I. Uh, <laughs> No, we can make a motion. Um, I just want to ask Bruce a question. Um, that's a really good question as of the, if we're financing 40 year loan, so we can afford it, what's the, what's the usable life cycle of, of the things we're putting? I, th I mean, our plants are 50 years old now. Yeah. So Makes sense. There are things that are on, on the design list that are not a 40 year life cycle. I think. So you mean we shouldn't, we shouldn't do a loan for longer than the product? You product's. shouldn't do a loan right. for $150,000 worth of paving. Right. You shouldn't do a $100,000 worth of paving in old vehicle. Right. Right. 
I have no idea. You can't. There's not even a footprint for that. Well, that's the price that's in there. I know. I know. Yeah, I think. I know. 100,000. We're going to nail all that down. Yeah, yeah, well. I'm going to send this to him. Would he? I'll send your comments to him. To me, life cycle is important. It's and very important. We, Especially pushing, for capital. We're mm -hmm. pushing Frontier Regional High School to do the same thing. Correct. And we're turning around and just saying, great, this is wonderful, let's go. To a 40 I don't think it's long. that. Yeah. No, but you to make me, a good it makes point. sense that you look at. I agree. Not, it's a 20 year project, a life cycle, and it has to be done every 20 years. I think all that needs to get hammered out. So, I, you know, my the financing portion needs to be hammered out. Yeah, my, my view on this project is not like, okay, let's go, let's just do whatever's on there. But I think at this point, we get the sense that we're going to move forward and then we dig in deep with the help of the committee. And, I think and, the, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. The whole process. My, my, the, the really was pushing this is the USCA got a dop, you know, got a bucket of money, and and they have had no money. And I, unless that somebody is makes a commitment towards, you know, or the federal government makes a commitment for uh, infrastructure programs, there's not going to be additional money. So we have this December first deadline, and you know, it's still 45 percent grant. So if if we get it. It's really important that we try. Well, there's no discussion, even when they did that, for the users' fees between the year 13 and the year 45. So I don't know what the user fees are relative to this grant. Well, well, they, they should, with the amount of money that we're collecting, they, they, that, like we spoke about that earlier, the rates shouldn't really increase a lot. Uh, did you have? Did you look on page 21? They're yeah. pretty. They're pretty stable. I realize that's only 75 percent. Of that doesn't include the town cost. No, right. And it also goes to year 13, which now you're paying for all the construction. Right. So what happens in year 14? Well, he didn't take in consideration that we're adding 70 new units from he the sugar. Did not take it. Right. Yeah. So that increases your. That's a 10 10 percent increase. Um, we were talking about separate management um, areas uh, because of the cost of the plant mm -hmm. for such a small number of users is the same, you know, as almost identical from, I can't. you know, replacement of cost and, and build. So we need to look at the structure of the rates um, in two different management areas. I so, think the financial part of it's on the set. Right. Yes, so I agree. Oh, yeah. No, we agree. Really yeah, we, not, we yep. agree. With a really fine to come. Would you be willing to help with that? He already has. <laughs> um, I, I just, you know, we just need to make some movement forward for this opportunity. That's all. Understood. Yep. But just to let you know, on page 17, we're borrowing the money next year, in 2020. We're um, to pay the money we borrow includes yes. the engine. It would be fiscal fees. 20. Yes. It would be fiscal 20 because we would we would find we would find out in March or April if it was a soft yes, and then we would you know be able to sort it out by fall, and and we would hopefully have a special town meeting sometime in the winter, you know. So it would be before fiscal 21. Well, fiscal 21 is a year past the date you need to pay for the design. Well, I'm just saying that num numbers are, are, are great, but implementation is another idea. Yeah. We have to look at how we implement the project. Right. I think it's a great process. What we looked at was, was prioritized and phasing it, um, but the implementation portion of the project needs a lot of work. And, and Jeff upped and up. Uh, echoed that same point last night too in his comments that we definitely need to nail all that down and well and, and we i think we have to go to a ballot no vote. i'm not sure so i mean that we need to sort all of that kind of stuff this is an act of the legislature so the town has no say right right that's right we just have to do it and pay for it well no, I don't mean that. I meant, you know, because we're... Debt be exclusion? Debt exclusion, because we'd be borrowing money. This is, this is going to be 
uh, an expensive process. I understand. And, and I think it needs to be all ironed out before we right, but I, jump I, into it. It kind of, I, I just think of everything globally, if you will. Where's Frontier at, at this? Because I've already, my last interactions with them is they're looking at about one and a half million dollars mm -hmm. every single year for the next three or four years. Uh, more than that, the next 10 years. 10 well, years. But see, so I mean, that's not another million, thing, you know, and that's going to add to it. Then, of course, if we yep. get this library thing, I mean, you know, that. I mean, it all needs to be fed, laid out. Our, our so senior housing. It's all need to prioritize the project. Yes. And say this is how much we're going to spend every year. Yep. I mean, we're we in debt. Agreed. So that needs financial planning is a priority mm -hmm. in this community. If we don't start doing it, we're going to be in big trouble. All right, is there nothing else? No. Is that term? Yes, I am. Motion to adjourn or dissolve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.